What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Old School Bike Reviews. Today we're talking about one of my favorite bikes of all time. Richie Rude won a handful of EWS titles on it and it is the Yeti SB6. And this was a big bike for me. I feel like once I got on this bike, I was able to really elevate my riding. And to this day, I don't think I've cornered as hard as I have on this bike um, in some instances. So this bike's really special. Uh, excited to talk about it. Let's get into it. So this is one of the more recognizable bikes out there. When it came out, it was a showstopper with the Switch Infinity Link suspension. It looks sleek, it looks fast, and obviously the Yeti team just went to absolutely slay on this bike. Um, so it's really got a re solid place in like mountain bike history, uh, especially when the Enduro thing was like really taking off. Um, so to start, it's got 152 mils of travel. It's paired with a 160 mil fork. Um, looking back at some old geometry numbers are kind of fun. For the large, which is what I had at 6.1, it had a 447 mil reach and a 440 mil chainstay with a 65 and a half degree head angle. So those numbers, you know, are a little outdated, but it's they're not absurdly off. Like a large today, I would ride at 475 or 480 mils. So that is a pretty big swing, but it's not unrideable. <laughs> the 26 inch era before this, you know, the larges were in the 420 range or shorter, but you know, by 2016, things have kind of started to move in the right direction. The one number that I think really sets this bike apart from everything else on the market at that time is the 440 mil chainstay. And then pairing that with a reach that isn't that long and a head angle that isn't that steep, the front to rear center ratio on this bike is really well balanced. Um, and that just puts your weight like in the center of the bike and puts a bunch of weight on the front wheel and that is the characteristic of this bike that set it apart from everything else uh, i was riding at the time and honestly it still i think would hold up now um, the amount of front end grip that bike had was insane and i think the the long chainstay is just really what enabled this bike to do what it did so well it helped that I think the frame was really well built. The suspension worked really well. Having that a bit longer chainstay, I think is what really solidified this bike as such a solid performer. I have memories of doing things on this bike so easily and so confidently that I haven't felt on many bikes since. Um, and being that it was shorter, uh, but with that all that front end grip, it's kind of like a, a cool time period where the wheelbase was a little longer, but it's still short enough. Like you get that short reach, that short head angle. So if you're able to deal with it um, and maintain that like confidence and posture on the bike, it would maneuver like nothing else. Modern bikes, you know, you can get them balanced today. And I do think it's good that reach numbers have grown, but at the end of the day, we're dealing with much longer wheelbases to achieve more room and a similar balance in a bike like i really like the forbidden dreadnought but it's got a 485 reach a 63 and a half degree head angle and to achieve you know a similar level of balance with weight on the front wheel it's got a 452 chainstay and that gets even longer so you're dealing with a significantly longer wheelbase and then sometimes that just constrains you in certain ways on the trail like dude my bike just won't fit there so with the sb6 it was just a cool time because i feel like this bike was incredibly well balanced had good suspension but the wheelbase was still like super reasonable short by today's standards so you could place the bike be incredibly technical um, and link up some like really nasty corners on this thing uh, all the other components on the bike were really coming around at that time too. And for me personally, this was my first real like baller build. Uh, it had a Thompson dropper post. It had some SRAM 11 speed, but with a 10 to 42 tooth cassette. So like finally had some good gearing, uh, had a Fox 36. And then I went in between um, a Fox coil and a Fox, uh, I think float 
X air shock, whatever they were calling it at the time. And this was the first time having like real quality suspension. Uh, I was on X fusion for a while and honestly the downhill stuff was pretty good, but the trail stuff just like really wasn't on the same level as Fox and uh, rock shocks at the time so having that fox 36 and like a really good coil out on the back on the suspension department was a massive step forward that bike um you couldn't really pick a hole in it it's like i'd be really curious you know taking it today and pairing it against like modern bikes because i think this thing would still be fast um and a lot of it has to do with that geometry and um how confident that I felt and, I, and I'm sure other people feel this way too about how confident um, that front end grip was. I mean, you just watch Richie riding at that time and you know, obviously he's a maniac and he makes anything look good, but like, especially on that bike compared to everyone else at the time, like I feel like that was a major part of his success. I was kind of disappointed like with the next iteration of Yeti bike um because i was so stoked on that generation and i was this was the first bike that like made me think about geometry and front and rear center balance um so when the yeti sb 150 came out i was like really excited to see if they would continue that because that was maybe my favorite aspect of this bike and they went kind of back to having a really short rear end and then lengthened the front end um that bike has pretty modern numbers. I think it's like a 480 reach and something like a 435 rear end uh, with the chainstay staying the same on all the sizes. So I was probably gonna be looking to get another updated Yeti, but given that that came out and didn't have the geometry that I loved from that bike, it was like, oh, damn it. That, it's not really getting me excited, even though the rest of the bike looked incredible. But yeah, I guess in, in summary, I really think this was kind of the genesis of the modern enduro bike. Um, I think it took a while for the industry to come back to the geometry that like kicked ass on this bike, um, which is a little annoying, but this thing holds a special place in my bike lineup. I would, it's definitely in like my top three favorite bikes of all time. Um, and yeah, for me, it, it definitely helped me progress in my riding, it gave me so much corner confidence. I did a few video parts on it that to this day, I'm like, dude, that I don't think I could replicate that. <laughs> Maybe if I had that bike again, I could, but I mean, I do some stuff that I'm, that gives me a little bit of hesitation now, even when watching those videos, cause I just had so much trust. I actually remember we had this trail that had some of the best corners, you know, we've ever built, um, me and my group of friends at the time. And it was a problem that I would just snake tires. Like if I hit the corners as hard as I could, I was almost guaranteed going to snake the tire. And put a wiggle in it and yeah there was a time maybe for a couple months when that trail was running really well and I was going up there all the time is like I probably went through five six tires yeah my back wheels were just having a, a tough time back there dealing with all the g-forces some awesome memories on this bike I kept it for a long time the end of it was I took it up to Bellingham and was riding some jump trails for the first time and I remember boosting this hip um, landing kind of off camber and shooting into a tree and like T-boning this tree and falling off the bike. But I heard this massive crack and somehow how it flexed, I think pushing the front wheel into the frame somehow split the top tube. Like if you felt under the top tube, it was just like a crack all the way down the center section of the top tube, super soft. And I wrote it like that without knowing for a while, but then I cleaned it and it was pretty obvious. And then I sold that frame, I'm pretty sure, for like not a total loss. Um, I think I sold that bike for like two grand and then the guy was just gonna carbon repair it, which I mean, sounds sketchy to me, but someone bought that bike, cracked, full disclosure, and um, I moved on. And after that, I got on some I got on some transitions. I, I really struggled to get the same level of confidence I had on that Yeti. It's honestly taken me probably 
until recently, until the past two years of really messing with bikes to get a similar level of corner confidence that that bike gave me. Um, and I always like questioned why I felt so good on it. And like, that's kind of what has led me down this like path of really nerding out about geometry and, and nagging so much about chainstay length. Cause I really think it's like one of the most important things on the bike. Like it really dictates how the entire balance is like how you ride it is, can be so dramatically influenced and improved by just a little longer on the chain stay, um, in my opinion. So also like, I feel like with a longer chain stay, it kind of helped the fact that it had a shorter reach because on a longer chain stay bike, you don't need to be as over the front um, so you can ride it a little bit more upright, which I think really meshed with my style. But since you're riding it a little bit more upright, standing up, you actually have a little bit more room with your arms. Like you're not leaned over as much and like having your arms crunched as much. So I feel like a longer chainstay helps you deal with a bit of a shorter reach. Um, and even in modern bikes, it's kind of like something I'm kind of theorizing about because I've ridden the Geometron, which has an insanely long reach. I've tried out a bunch of different stuff. I do feel like a longer chainstay means you don't need that extra reach. Like you're already adding wheelbase, which really dictates the whole stability of the bike. And then the reach should just be dictating kind of where you want your upper body to be. And it, you know, and if you have that long chain state, it doesn't need to be super far forward. So you can kind of get away with the shorter reach. So I think that's part of the reason why it works so well. But anyway, I'll stop nerding about, about geometry, but the bottom line is this bike was dope. People won a ton of races on it. And I think anyone that has ridden this bike um, knows it was a good one. So shout out to Yeti for making a cool bike back in 2016, really helped me out and we'll talk about some cool bikes uh coming up next um oh, maybe get into some 29ers some more downhill bikes i've had a lot of good ones so either way thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys later peace